So when I found out that Japan Anime Games got the license to make a Sword Art Online game, or possibly games in the future, I really wanted to take a look at it. It's called Sword Art Online Sword of Fellows. I really, really like Sword Art. I like the IP. I like the characters of Kirito and Asuna and all of them. And when I saw it was in a board game, a die game, to be more honest, I was very excited. I asked to check it out. They sent it to me. And this is what I got. Sword Art of Online board game Sword of Fellows. Teeny tiny little game. I was expecting something a little bigger. I'm one of those people that never actually looks at the dimensions of games and just kind of assumes they're all going to be the same moderate size or maybe even extra, extra large. But this is another tiny game. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll give it a chance, see what it's like. And when I opened up the box, it came with some interesting stuff. I'll show you down below and then I'll give you a review after I talk about it. So here we have the game Sword Art Online, board game Sword of Fellows, and everything included. There's quite a lot of stuff, actually, more than I was expecting from the tiny box it was in. So it's a nice way of putting all the content in a small, compactable uh, box there. You're going to get different characters, and there's six different ones to choose from, all of my favorites. So you have Kirito, Asuna, Klein, Silica, Agile, one of my lesser favorites, and then Lizbeth. So quite a bunch to choose from, but you'll always have to have, have Kirito regardless of the number of players you want to have in the game. It comes with a manual, it tells you how to play the game, and gives you examples of how to play. Um, it doesn't have a lot of pictures or explanations, but uh, after going through it, I was able to understand how to play the game, and I actually got to play it live as well. Uh, these are all individual die for all of the different characters, and to tell which die goes with which, you can actually go ahead and look on the character uh, die and see the character's face. So you'll know that that's Kirito's die, you'll know that um, that is Asuna's die, and that is Lizbeth, so on and so forth. Uh, there's Klein's die. So they have all of their own unique die, and on their die, they have unique different um, roles, whether it be uh, Kirito's, which is a two or sixes, and then of course their die being a wild that they roll it onto their head. You're also going to get these cards here, and most of them are items, but there's a couple unique, um, sorry, there's, there's usable items, and then there's ones that are equipable, and then you have, of course, the support card, Yui, which is a character that comes out uh, throughout the game when uh, you complete certain portions of the game that will help you along. Here's your basic die, which you'll be using as either your main dice or your supporting die, and you're always going to be rolling extra die as character. You're always going to be rolling uh, with two players. You'll always be utilizing uh, both players during the game, so it's kind of cool. You get your special tokens for different characters. Uh, these are whether you get to use your superpowers or not. And then over here is your damage. Uh, this is basically a location token, which is going to go up this track here. And each of the realms is going to have at least uh, three different sections that are going to be randomized. And they're all something from a different portion in the in the game Sword Art, or the anime. You have the Ambush of the PK Guild, the lower section fight, the disaster in the trap room. Ooh, all these were very important aspects of the very beginning arc of sword art and you would randomly select them and put, then put them face down but I just want to go ahead and show you them anyway because they're all really cool uh, the quest for the rare materials crimson bloodthirst and the battle for the holy knight there's there's quite a lot of them if you're a sword art online fan you probably know all, all, all of these or at least most of these and um you're fighting the bad guy at the very end, the end of the world, you're going to be fighting the commander himself. So you're going to put these like this, and it's going to be random as for which one of these three is going to be. The rest of these you won't need. You're going to choose the amount of characters you're going to be playing with, whether it's a two, three, four, or so on and so forth. And uh, then you're going to flip over this card here, and uh, there's going to be basically different events that happen. And you're going to place this little marker on the different portions of the of the sections. Where well, this one here has four, this one here only has one, has a 30 HP, and then it shows you how much damage it does at the end of every round, and then um, any special abilities, whether it's minus one reroll to all characters, and then this is also AoE damage that takes place. Uh, characters are then going to get these little boards here. Uh, like this one over here is going to tell him when he is level uh, level 30, he can use these three attacks. When he hits level 50, he'll get this one. When he hits level 80, it's this one. And as you complete these sections, you'll level up, basically. And you'll also then be able to use these die. When you first start off, it'll tell you how many main die and support die you have. So, okay, we'll get uh, three main die and three support die and you'll give them to each of the different characters and players are actually playing together so you're going to select a partner to chain with and then you're going to be rolling die to accomplish certain uh, certain missions and when you roll them you're going to try and connect them together so if I'm playing as Kirito both players get to roll their die and then you're going to combine them and say okay well I need uh, for instance the same type so I need four of the same uh, there's two twos maybe we'll keep that and then we'll go ahead and roll the rest of them over again 
and uh, oh, we didn't get any extra twos here. And you're trying to basically line them up. So all the characters do different things. Some of them requires require certain types of rolls, straight, some of them requires pairs, some of them requires triples, and then it shows you the damage. And after you've finished, depending on how you do your combination, so for instance, if I had uh, two twos, if I had two threes, and if I had two sixes, I would then put through, I would put them all into vertical arcs, which would do four, four, and four damage, which would then do minus uh, four, four, and four to 30. And if this is still alive after that happens, uh, depending on if I do a perfect chain or not, is how it's going to affect us. So in a perfect chain, I can then say switch, and bam, now Elizabeth is going to be the main character, and because I perfectly were able to put all the dice in here, she gets to roll now ignoring the ability here. If I didn't do a perfect roll, maybe I did uh, say, something like, uh, let's say this. Uh, these two are kind of useless, right? Uh, so in which case, I would then only be able to do eight damage, and then he's gonna do two damage to both characters, and if we're not leveled up, we only have 10 and eight health, so that's gonna reduce our health quite a bit. And then they would pass on to the next player, and that player would then get to choose uh, any of the players to, to work off of, depending on what characters in the game, based on the number of players, right? And it's gonna go back and forth like that. Uh, if you can defeat this one here, you'll move on to the next one. And as you progress, there's gonna give you more main and more support die, depending on how difficult it is, until finally you face the last boss. And the last boss has a unique, oh, no, it goes like this, a unique and interesting fight at the very end that utilizes Kirito working with everybody else in, in conjunction. When you complete these areas here, you'll get new items that you can go ahead and utilize that can help you out, or you'll also get, uh, instead, the uh, potions that you can use as one-time uses. If you take damage and any of your heroes go to zero, the game is over. Or if you are able to accomplish and go all the way to the top here and defeat the commander here, you are going to be the winner. The last thing you need to know about is uh, you're gonna get these tokens here. And when you uh, when you go through these rooms here, you're gonna have a certain amount of them. It'll tell you up here. And you can utilize them. This one says you can change one standard die into a one or a six. So if you had uh, two sixes, maybe you want an extra six, you could go ahead and utilize your power and you could do that. The same can be said for your, uh, your heroes or your friends. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game, going up here, defeating them in order. Uh, bam, 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 bam. And trying to make them not attack you because if you do perfect combos, they can't attack you. And su successfully getting all the way to him and fighting him, I'll, show you, I'll tell you how the big boss battle works when we get up. But uh, if you can do that, you can win the game. Sword of Fellows, Sword Art Online. All right, let's come up and talk about it. For such a small game, there's a ton of stuff to talk about in Sword Art Online, Sword of, Sword of Fellows. So I'm gonna try and be uh, less, less in-depth than I really probably want to be, because I really want to get into depth with this game, but uh, anyway, we're going to have, talk about three characters. You have Kirito. He does multiple damage based on the uh, the same type of number. So if you get a bunch of ones, Yahtzee basically, that's how he does damage. You got Asuna, which she's going to do damage based on getting uh, straights. And depending on how large the straights are, is the more damage she's going to deal. And Klein is going to be basically... Uh, you're going to be trying to roll less than a number based on the no amount of die. So if you roll three die and you can get something like under the number, uh, what does it say here, less than or equal to eight, and you have three die, or four die, less than or equal to eight, then you're going to be able to do his, his combos. So for instance, uh, maybe two twos and two ones. If I had two twos and two ones when I rolled them, I can then put them on my Crimson Fan and bam, they do six damage. There's also things like Pierce. Some of the bosses will have armor and armor negates attack. So if you did 10 damage to a boss who had five armor, you'd in fact only do five damage to him. Pierce ignores that. All the other characters have unique abilities as well as unique little tokens that can come with them as to how they kind of do their combinations. Some of them are more advanced than others. Kirito is always gonna to need to be played. And then it also tells you on the back of it uh, how all the abilities kind of work and gives you some flavor text like starburst stream a high level twin sword blade skill a 16 hit combo that spreads white light like stardust so it just gives you a little bit of flavor there which is really nice and all the characters are very 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 unique and i don't mean like somewhat unique like one comes with extra die i mean they all come with their own unique die and they all have their own unique abilities and they all roll differently but they can roll with you. Uh, at a certain point, you're gonna unlock your unique character die and that character die will function based on how your board is. You can choose to use your character die or you can use one of your main, the main die, it depends on how you wanna do it or it depends on how your opponent wants to do it if he's actually asking you to assist him, right? And uh, it's nice to have your main die usually because at least you can have that chance for a while, which is important because you don't always wanna roll a six, right? The bosses can be incredibly difficult. In fact, we lost the game we played the first two times, and the last time we played this game on live stream, we won just barely, and it was great. 
the theme of this game is wonderful. I was so, so shocked with how well it's done for how small of a game it is. It has a lot of stuff going on for what a small game it is. Uh, the amount of items, you don't need more than these, actually. Like, we haven't even gone through even half of these. And we played four or five times now, so that's pretty impressive for only having eight items, three of which are equipable, three of which you just utilize. The first time you beat up, go up a level, you're also going to get a card. The second time you go up a level, you'll get Yui, which will let you stop a counter attack, and also gives you an item. The third time, you don't get to go up any more levels because you've gone up all the two levels you can go up, but you get to fight this last boss here. And this last boss, after you guys beat him with his 50 health, his 10 attack, and his 8 defense, if you can do that, you're going to get him down to 1 HP. But he will then have 27 defense and he'll do 27 damage which means every time you do not do a perfect combo regardless of if you kill him or not he's going to kill you or one of your allies and kirito is always going to be the last person so it's always going to be killing his ally so if there's three players in the game i work with grant grant dies i work with callie callie dies now it's all by myself and the only way to defeat him is basically getting a super yahtzee combo which doesn't seem possible but it is it's just really challenging. And as your players, as your, as the characters die, you'll get special, you use their special die as wilds instantly. So you see them helping you beyond the grave. Really, really cool thematically. This game is a lot of fun. The artwork is great. The components are great. Fitting all this into a perfect box size is amazing as well. I actually, for most games, I would assume all this stuff would be in a box that's like double this size actually, because that's usually how it works is the box is massive and the components are like not that much. But in this case, it's great. I mean, I recommend this game thoroughly. This is one of my favorite dice rollers currently. I like this better than King of Tokyo. I like this better than uh, a lot of the cooperative die rolling style games. And it has a lot of stuff going for it. I haven't even played through all the characters yet, but just beating it once felt so good. I can remember certain portions in the game where I did certain things and was like, wow, that's amazing. I did not think that was going to happen. Callie is playing Asuna, who is really challenging to use because you have to get, in order to do her ultimate, you need to have a 1-1, one, one, 2 3 4 5 6 6 and it has to be rolled by you and your and your ally, because it's a cooperative game, uh, at, uh, at the same time. And use, using only what little abilities you have and equipment is, is challenging, but when you get it, it feels very, very rewarding. More rewarding than most games I have played as far as die rollers go. Um, now, that is also to say that I like Sword Art Online theme. If you don't like Sword Art Online theme, this is probably not going to be as impressive to you, I suppose, because a lot of the reason why I like this game is not just the mechanics and the customiz customizability and the options, but also the storyline integrates very well, and you do feel like you're climbing the ladder towards success to fight that last boss, and that last boss encounter that I, I, you don't see usually rules of a game changing at the very end to make that whole big surmount just you know occasion i like that little added aspect as well so um in general the game's great i really really enjoy this thing i think if you have even a little bit of an inclination to cooperative dice rollers it'd be worth taking a look at especially since it's uh, such a low it's a lower cost game and smaller size box game and it uh, doesn't have a lot of foot space but when you play it down you guys are going to enjoy this one uh if you don't like games that are very very challenging and make you stressed out that's going to be one to pass this is going to be one to pass for you because it is very stressful like you are nervous that you're not going to accomplish the next goal you can die at level one just as easily as you can die at level three really like it, it because of how difficult it can be you're going to be gaining more and more stuff as you go along so the challenge remains constant and if you do not it does require a little bit of luck but also a lot of bit of what die you choose and how you choose and depending on what characters you chain with how it's all going to come to fruition so a little bit of luck a lot of bit of strategy a lot a lot of stress but i like that i really do this game is excellent definitely check out check out sword of fellow sword Art online the board game i highly recommend this one it gets my seal of approval hands down Japan anime games another little jam yes yes